nearly simultaneous events will have very different storylines involving President Trump. Washington, President Trump will have just wrapped up the first day of his summit meeting in Vietnam with Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, when back home in Washington, Michael D. Cohen, his former lawyer and fixer, takes the stand on Wednesday morning to testify publicly against him before the House Oversight Committee. Two nearly simultaneous events and two very different storylines for Mr. Trump. One involves a leader he has assiduously courted and hopes will provide him with, at the minimum, an example of his ability to make peace with the United States adversaries. The other involves a former associate who has already detailed the president's secrets to the special counsel and now will share some of them with the American public. The clashing narratives follow what has become a frustrating pattern for Mr. Trump in which some of his biggest moments on the international stage have been overtaken by events at home. Foreign trips mark critical moments for every president. But for a president in search of evidence to support his claims that he has strengthened the United States' position in the world, they have not always been the successes he had hoped to portray. From his first foreign trip as president, to Saudi Arabia in 2017, to his meeting last summer with Queen Elizabeth II, Mr. Trump has often found himself competing for coverage with some new and dramatic turn in the scandals that have consumed his administration. On that inaugural trip, Mr. Trump left the White House for Riyadh, the Saudi capital, just as the New York Times reported that he had admitted to Russians in an Oval Office meeting that firing the FBI director, James B. Comey, took great pressure off him. The Washington Post then reported that a sitting White House official was under federal investigation for possibly colluding with the Russians during the 2016 presidential campaign. Mr. Trump was preparing to depart on a marathon five-country tour of Asia in November 2017 when the special counsel's office made its first bombshell indictments, bringing charges against his former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, as well as two other campaign associates, Rick Gates and George Papadopoulos. The president was in Davos, Switzerland, when the Times reported that Mr. Trump had ordered the firing of the special counsel, Robert S. Mueller III, who is overseeing the Russia investigation, and had backed down only when the White House counsel threatened to resign. And an honor guard was giving Mr. Trump a royal salute at Windsor Castle in July when his deputy attorney general, Rod J. Rosenstein, announced the indictment of 12 Russian intelligence officers in the hacking of the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. For Mr. Trump, who is particularly concerned with winning news cycles, the summit meeting with Mr. Kim in Hanoi, Vietnam's capital, that begins Wednesday as a major opportunity to change the subject from his losing fight with Democrats over funding for a wall along the southwestern border. But at 10 p.m. that day in Hanoi, the counternarrative will begin when Mr. Cohen starts his testimony before the House Oversight Committee about Mr. Trump's alleged payoffs, financial disclosures, compliance with campaign finance laws and business matters. He is also expected to deliver raw, personal stories of his 10 years serving Mr. Trump. And this time, coverage of Mr. Trump's trip abroad is not threatened to be subsumed by news reports, or by the findings of his own Justice Department, but by a Democrat-dominated congressional committee. White House officials said House Democrats were deliberately trying to step on the summit meeting. Rudolph W. Giuliani, Mr. Trump's personal lawyer, said the overlapping events were no coincidence. After all, they are politicians, he said in a text. A spokesman for the committee chairman, Rep. Elijah E. Cummings of Maryland, did not respond to multiple requests for comment about whether the scheduling of the hearing on the same day as the meeting was done intentionally. But Lanny J. Davis, a lawyer for Mr. Cohen, said the timing was unintentional. These dates were developed over a long period of time, with lots of stops and starts and delays, Mr. Davis said. We had to worry about being attacked with Trump tweets. Trump set up the first reason for the delay. The overlapping events, he added, were the inevitable result of having chaos every day, and, in fact, Mr. Cohen's testimony was rescheduled, after he postponed it twice. White House officials played down any anxiety that Mr. Cohen's testimony would steal the spotlight from Mr. Trump. One senior administration official described Mr. Cohen as a convicted criminal who has already lied to Congress and said that the clear headliner of the day would be a president who is trying to undo 70 years of war and neglect. There is also the question of which news outlets will interrupt coverage of the meeting between the president and Mr. Kim for Mr. Cohen's hearing. 
Fox News has already touted an exclusive post-meeting interview with Mr. Trump, conducted by Sean Hannity, the cable news host, as part of its extensive coverage of the event. Other current and former White House officials said they saw a silver lining, the president tends to spend less time on Twitter when he is busy overseas, where he is less consumed by any developments pertaining to the open investigations. Mr. Cohen's testimony, which might have had Mr. Trump glued to his television in the dining room off the Oval Office if he were home, they said, could pack less punch if he is busy with Mr. Kim. Still, even people who are not natural supporters of Mr. Trump said the timing of Mr. Cohen's hearing was unfortunate, whether it was avoidable or not. It's not a desirable thing that the president goes abroad and, while he's having an international summit, his former lawyer is testifying about the alleged crimes he's committed, said Benjamin Witz, the editor-in-chief of Lawfare, and a friend of Mr. Comey's. The pattern, some critics of the president said, is simply a product of the number of investigations involving Mr. Trump, which have overshadowed his work both at home and abroad. When your campaign, your transition, your charity, your business, your White House and your inaugural committee are all under investigation, there are going to be a lot of new developments, said Matthew Miller, a former spokesman for the Obama Justice Department.